My dear respected brothers and sisters, all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm sure you have all been asked this question before. What do you think success is? Or do you consider yourself successful? Or maybe a judgment has been made about your success or lack thereof. And the answer people give, and if I were to ask you now, I'm sure you have some answers in your mind. It varies considerably, ranging from material possessions, whether having a good house, car, money, profession, job, a degree, authority, power, position. And we have very many different criteria that we use to determine whether that person is successful or not. But whatever the case is, we do agree on a few things what success should be. That success is a fundamental quest for all human beings. Everybody wants to be successful. That success brings about a peace of mind, freedom from anxiety and worries. So it cannot be something that is momentarily you can't just be successful one moment and unsuccessful or feeling of unsuccessful the next moment. It has to be something a lot more lasting for it to be considered a success. And overall, we agree that material possessions by themselves do not really bring about success. And so it shouldn't be surprising why the rich and famous, many of them end their lives in brutal ways. But unfortunately, people see material things as success. And depends on who we are, people decide whether they would be too busy to carry on a conversation with you or whether they really want to know something more about you. So it is not by coincidence that people ask you when they meet you for the first time after the usual formalities of pleasure of meeting you to ask you, what do you do? And what they mean by that is what profession you have, what job you have, what status you are. And when you answer, maybe the next question is where you're from, because where you're from can also give you an idea of, of that person. Nothing is wrong, by the way, on asking anybody, what do you do and where you're from? Nothing is wrong with that. What is wrong is what we do with the answer when we get the answer. And how do we feel when somebody says, oh, I'm an attorney, I'm a CEO, I'm a doctor, I am a physician, I'm a engineer, as opposed to when somebody says, I'm a farmer, I am a handyman, I'm a cleaner, I am unemployed. So right away, we start making judgments in our mind that this man is either successful that I'm talking to, or in our mind, this man is a failure. With that mindset, we would have not had a conversation with Saeed ibn Amir, radiallahu an, who had one piece of clothing while being a governor of Hims in Syria. Many might have considered him to be unsuccessful, or maybe Omar ibn Khattab. Many people might have said, 
he was unsuccessful if we are looking at material things. On the other hand, Pharaoh, Haman, Karun, Shaddad, would be deemed successful because they had all the wealth that one can think about. In fact, Karun's wealth was so much that he would make today's billionaire look poor. As Allah says, فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَتِهِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا يَا لَيْتَنَ لَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَا قَارُونَ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَذِّ نَظِيمٌ So he came out before his people in his adornment. He used to drag the keys to his wealth. And those who desired a worldly life, they said, Oh, wow, would that we had had the likes of what Karun had. Indeed, he is one of great fortune. Unfortunately, that did not last long. His wealth and him were swallowed in the earth, and then people realized that this is not what success is. So let us now go and look at what, as Muslims, we should see as success. The first benchmark of success is to know who you are. In this grand scheme of things, true success lies in knowing who is the creator and who is the creation. And the very first verses that were revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us just that. Allah says, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The first verse to the final messenger, to the final ummah, Allah is saying who he is. And he is the one that created. And when we talk of this creation, my dear brothers and sisters, this creation of Allah is amazing. Because now, after hundreds and thousands of years of our science and our knowledge of science, we know that our scientists are telling us they are one multiplied by 10 to the 24th power of heavenly bodies, which means they are one comma 24 zeros, a number way too big for us to call. In some, in British, they call it a quadrillion. In America, you call it a septillion. That's how many. It's like trillion, 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 trillion of heavenly bodies that are out there. And this is only the heavenly, the earthly heaven or the sama'u dunya. Allah talks about the saba samawat. He talks about the kursi. He talks about the arsh. About Allah. This is the creator. And then he tells the next verse, Who are you and who am I? Khalaq al insana min alaq. When you look at this great, humongous creation of Allah, then who you are? He created you from a drop of clinging substance that you need microscope. You need every detail to see who you are and you're nothing but a microscopic so tiny that's where we all began and so if we know who we are and we know who our creator is then we can know what success really means and once we know who we are and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then it leads us to know what is the Creator telling us about success because you and I cannot determine that. When you plot us on a graph, we, bec we become a tiny dot lost in this universe. We become so tiny when we are put among this whole grand scheme of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us his grandeur and shows us who we are. So the second point is to know 
what the Creator wants from us. And first, he tells us that if you believe in what he revealed, you're successful. They are the ones upon whom there is guidance and they are the successful ones. Allah tells us that if we stay away from superstitious and heresies, that we will be successful. Allah tells us being engaged in da'wah. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah is telling us that let there be from among you a nation arise from among you that will invite to what is good, forbid what is wrong, that these indeed are the successful people. The third way of success is surrendering to Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, this might look like an easy task, but surrendering to Allah is where many of our Muslim ummah today is failing. Because surrender really means you do what Allah wants you to do without questioning why he wants you to do that. You and I cannot answer why Salatul Fajr is two rakat and Dhuhr is four, Asir is four, Maghrib is three, Isha is four. You and I cannot understand why some are recited loudly and some are recited silently. We do not know why you have to take just seven tiny pebbles and pell the Jamarat when we go for Hajj. We surrender to Allah. And this is the process that Allah wants us to surrender. Like Mary, peace be upon her, when she was about to give birth, she was instructed, In that state of childbirth, she was, to, she was commanded to shake the trunk of a date palm tree for the dates to fall. And I'm sure if you put some of the strongest men together to shake a date's palm tree for a day to fall, it will not happen. But she did it without asking Allah, how will that happen? She surrendered to Allah. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam surrendered to Allah when Allah commanded him to strike the sea with his rod and that with his power it will open. He did not question Allah. It never happened before, but he trusted Allah. The problem is, if we think we are powerful, we do not try these things. If we feel that we do not have the enough strength of faith and trust in Allah, we will not try these things because we will question, how can a rod open a sea and people are going to pass through? How can a lady in child labor and only the sisters and the mothers know what it is in child labor that you have to shake the date palm tree and a date will fall down. But when we start to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we think we know it all and we have big degrees, high degrees, that we begin to question, oh, we start to analyze, we go into philosophy, we go into to analogy, we start to experiment here and say, no, this cannot work and that cannot work. It doesn't work like that about Allah. And finally, success is when the day, on the day when the deeds will be weighed. When we stand in front of Allah, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ the day when we will all stand in front of Allah and now the judge of judges, he is going to tell us whether we are successful or not. That is the ultimate success. As he says, وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْحَقِّ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ 
the weighing of the deeds on that day will be the true weighing. Those whose scale of good deeds are heavy, they are indeed the successful ones. My dear brothers and sisters, living this life and being fooled that success is just material things or power, we have seen nations upon nations who think they have reached the peak, but then they are here no more. As the poet Arandi, he says, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِذَا مَا تَمَّ نُقْصَانُ فَلَا يُغَرُّ بِطْوِيبِ الْعَيْشِ الْإِنسَانُ هِيَ الْأُمُورُ كَمَا شَاهَدْتَهَا دُوَلٌ مَنْ سَرَّهُ زَمَنٌ سَاءَتْهُ أَزْمَانُ You see, sometimes we feel happy when something happened to us at that moment and we feel that we achieve it all. But who is happy for one moment can very well be sad for many moments. And so my advice to myself and to all of you, go back and think deeply. How do you think of yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do I estimate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because he tells us, he tells us that a number of people do not estimate him properly. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ Allah is saying to us, many people do not estimate the grandeur, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we go and we say, Allahu Akbar, does it mean just a word or does it mean that... I'm actually going with that time. You might have to get the United airline security to pull me off <laughs> and uh, and they should not be pulling off people off the plane so in conclusion my dear brothers and sisters when we say Allahu Akbar we really mean Allah you are great you are greater than anything we can imagine. You are greater than that. Even this heavens and the earth, whatever we are imagining, you are greater than that. And when we say, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim, glory be to Allah, the Almighty, the All-Great, that is what, when we bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and that is the true success. And so every day we are reminded, Hayya ala salah. Come to Salah and bow down to Allah the Great and come to success. This is the true success. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.